hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video what i'm gonna be doing is my uni experience and i've pulled up at my university and i'm at etihad stadium manchester city stadium i have a special guest and that's Yo, 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 yo! So, uh, me and Beth are going to be speaking about our um, uni experiences. I commuted and Beth lived in Manchester. So, you can, you can get an idea of like what both of our experiences was if you're looking to move out for uni or if you're looking to commute then you know this is a good video for you or if you're looking to come to ucfb then you'll know about like what we went through and then you'll have an idea of what you're going to also go through ucfb yep. university campus of football business so for all you that always ask me hello what did ucfb stand for it's university college of football business okay and if you don't know now you know get to know did you at any point did you change your um, subject choice no nah. Always went with football coaching management. Okay, so I went with sports business and coaching in the beginning and then I changed to football coaching and management. So What made you change? Because I just thought I don't care for business, do you know what I mean? Now looking back at it though, I wish I did that mm. course because it gives me two different like subject areas. Areas rather than just coaching, do you know what I mean? Like I could have graduated having like a business mindset and then having a coach. But now you've got coaching and management. management management mindset true and that's where I wanted to go down anyway like a management route and then a coaching route as well so yeah so what was it like here um, living in Manchester like well in first year I lived in halls and which were literally just outside Piccadilly station so I could just hop on a tram literally like walk across the road literally and then hop on a tram and get into uni that's if we were at the Etihad but for our coaching course we were at somewhere called Bellevue yeah. and that's like further outside of Manchester so we used to have to get Ubers but that was okay because we was living in halls and like there was like a lot of us so we could all chip in for an Uber um, but wasn't it what did what did you say it was a bit expensive like you pay for rent and then yeah. you pay for all these Ubers it was especially if you had like if certain people like your first year like so certain people don't care about it yeah. we know it doesn't count towards our grade so especially if someone's not coming in and stuff like having to fork out for an Uber by yourself yeah that was definitely spenny the trains were cheap for me um but they only started to get cheaper um when I didn't have 9am lectures so when I was waking up at like 6 o'clock getting into money for 8 o'clock uh, the prices were mad they were like £12.90 or something but now that um well i finished uni now but like in second year and third year they used to be like £5.50 £3.60 sometimes so yeah how did you make mate in uni I don't know I just guess it sort of happened I didn't actually go out like fully looking for for mates like we met each other didn't we yeah. on like was on it the course. first day no was like, it not the first day? It was like the first day. It was day. like an induction. Induction day, was it not? It and was, then like I smiled at you. No, it was like the actual first day of our like lectures and that. Oh, was it? Yeah, it wasn't like the first day of... Yeah, maybe it was the induction day, yeah. It was Because it was here. Yeah. It wasn't at Bellevue. Yeah, because I was just sat like a gimp on my ones in it. I was just like, ugh. And then I'm just surrounded by bear boys in it. Mm. And I just see Beth and I'm just like, ugh. But and then Beth was also with another girl. So I was just like, I don't want to approach these because these might already know each other. Do you know what I mean? So that I helped as well though. Like, because obviously I was living in halls and me and another girl, we were living in the same yeah, yeah. flat. So that helped us then like, luckily we were on the same course. Like it just worked out. But then obviously you don't want to see another girl sat by themselves on their own mm. and not like approach them yeah so i was just like hey we're on the same course Can and then this little scouse accent came out and i was like oh <laughs> my day you, you didn't expect it would you nah, you i just fell in love instantly um so advice i'd give to someone that's like going into uni first year and that like honestly like don't force friendships like you don't have to force it like it will literally just happen naturally on turn if so if you're trying to make friends with someone on your course um just go up to them and be like oh like like what's this assignment about blah 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 start talking about the assignments and then that way like it'll kind of open like a friendship because they might like you know vibes with you and like you might get along and you might always come back to each other for help with, with assignments and then you can just build a friendship from there do you know what i mean that's another way of starting a friendship without actually starting a friendship does that make sense but yeah a lot of the people as well like 
you wouldn't necessarily just because you've met them on the first day doesn't mean that they're going to be your friend throughout the uni experience like you'll drift and become closer to certain people like there was people that i was closer with in first year that i wasn't like there was no beef with them but you just drift apart and then yeah. you find your actual people but as well it was really daunting because it was the course is full of lads but i'm not even joking like we're all like a family and it, it's like it's crazy isn't yeah it? like each and every single boy like i did not feel intimidated no. at one point like it was mad like when i first um the, the actual first day me coming to uni for the induction day um there was like five boys that i was with at the uh, train station i was like these are going to my uni so i just literally spoke to them i was like can you help me get to the um, um station and then literally we just like gelled but everyone's so sound like literally. especially on our course i don't know I, i've heard some stories about other courses but on the fcm course like we're still we're still talking now like we're still like really really good mates and like we were saying the other day that i could literally ring up even people that i've not really spoke to that much on a course for help or something like not for like personal stuff but like if i needed some career stuff or like like we'll reach out to each other and be like hey like this is a job opportunity like we've all got a big group chat on facebook yeah. so like it's a bit dead now like we've finished like we haven't got that much to speak about so what was your social life like because i know my social life was like dead because i didn't really go out too tough but um like how did you balance work life and uni life like well I mean, me, work life and social life sorry yeah well it was a uh, obviously like i play football so i couldn't just go on like i couldn't go out all the time and to me like i don't really like drinking that much but social life was good like i can't lie like it is going out and actually doing something obviously in first year living so close to city centre like you could go out into the city which actually to be fair i didn't do that much mm. it's since moving up away that i've actually traveled into the city and explored it a bit more don't ask me why but so you could balance it because you had other factors in your life which you had to balance already so yeah kind of balanced well i did kind of definitely have like uh, it was social especially in second year like we went and lived in a house all together before covid came along like it was good like being with all the girls and like finally being with a big group of girls whereas like obviously you know there's so much boys you can take to be honest like i'm a very much a girls girl so being in a house with girls was like sick and living in such a student area as well and that was good so for me for someone that commuted obviously i still kind of went out more with like like the friends from back home so i just like as soon as i finish uni like i'd go out with my friends back at home in liverpool i wouldn't really go out in manchester that often but obviously like if you are commuting and that you've just gotta like you know times of like you going back home and that you've gotta like plan ahead and all that stuff like it does get jarring after a bit but luckily my cousin did live in manchester so like if i wanted to ever stay over like i just stay at hit accommodation but yeah really social life was all right for me personally i wouldn't say that i've experienced the uni life I feel like because I didn't explore too tough, especially Corona, the little bitch, she ruined everything. So my second year, my third year, I just went down the drain and first year, I just didn't do anything really. So yeah, I kind of joined a few um, Somali societies in Manchester, obviously because my uni didn't have a Somali society and you know, Somali societies are like massive in like different cities. So I wanted to be a part of that. So I just joined the Manchester um, university one don't know what their uni's called but yeah kind of went to their one pretended i was from that uni as well but yeah don't forget that your main aim is to get your degree and not to be going out going out so just always in the back of your head remember that you need to get up and go to uni yeah. and like even if you did go out for a night out or whatever like if you're still hungover whatever whatever get your ass up and go to your lecture i met some be. people like you meet some people at uni you think how are you coming here to get a degree like they literally live for the social life and it's like yeah and like i don't know like it's different certain people just live for the social okay. of uni but for me like this is here somewhere where you can progress in your career luckily i've been there and done that when i was younger like obviously not going out to clubs and stuff but like i kind of lived the sort of you had your you had I your had, time of fun yeah. yeah so when you got to uni it was like yeah, it was that. like head screwed on and but you also it is good it's a good release though when you can balance it properly and you can go out and like like get rid of the stress of uni because uni is probably been the most stressful time of my life so basically yeah um she could balance uni and social life i could balance uni and social life therefore you have to balance uni and social life okay thank you very much
So what opportunities did you get from being at oh. uni? I got I got quite a lot of opportunities and another thing as well like being a girl in a male dominated uni like all eyes are on you yeah like you stand out and it's good like it's, it's good because they want you to do more stuff because obviously you know like diversity get the girls in and but also like you stand out naturally anyway like not because they're putting you on a sort of pedestal you just stand out because you're a girl yeah um and so yeah i've had quite a few opportunities and I mean, I can't say any of them have paid off completely yet because, like, I'm not doing a career in them. But I would never like. I would always say yes to things like constantly. I'd be like, if they like, can you do this? And if I can, I will do it 100. percent Like, even work-wise, like people. To be fair, saying that, being it, uh, not exactly an opportunity from this uni, but being in Manchester and creating like a business Instagram page, I had someone message me. Um, like a goalkeeper coach and I was a bit weird like a bit cautious at first I was thinking like who's this man messaging me but it's actually my job now like I went down and met him so like little things like oh that God, yeah. coming to uni and being like yeah I need to create like a football business Instagram that then led me to get a job yeah. so I guess you could kind of relate it to an opportunity from uni so the opportunities that I got when I was in uni was um applied for a scholarship and then um, they turned me down they were like we don't want you and then the person they actually gave it to turned them down and they left uni so then they came back to me and they went do you want a, do you want a scholarship to stay for you and I was just like take it but I'll take it do you know what I mean but um that 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 taking that scholarship it led me to go to like different um events and you know it made me like open like my mind a bit and like think of like ways that like different ways that I can go down coaching and you know meet new people and like see their mindsets and not not copy their mindsets but like that inspired me to like kind of you know be the way I am today and want to achieve what I want to achieve do you know what I mean and be more passionate about be more passionate about like coaching because at first I wasn't really passionate but I was passionate but and then now coming to this uni like it actually made me realize like this is what I need to do and I'm gonna do it basically yeah and then like going to the kick it out events um, like it like it was it they inspired me really because it was just like I was like surrounded by like people like me i was surrounded by females even the majority of the people there were males but it was just like seeing the odd few like girls it really like did inspire me like yeah like, like i didn't say that i but i got a, a scholarship with kick it out and that was i literally got that scholarship by the skin of my teeth i actually turned up to my interview and i was like oh i actually don't want this scholarship stupidly but then they actually gave it to me anyway um and you know we've been to a few events together haven't we yeah and they've been they have been good like it's good to be look at another side of the football industry and i get to educate myself on different cultures and their experiences yeah. with like racism and discrimination in football because obviously just as a as a white female the only part of me that really gets discriminated against is being a female um, so learning from you know even like chatting to Halal and like the see, seeing the struggles not even from a kick out point of view but like <laughs> as a friend throughout uni and seeing her journey in the football industry and realizing like her barriers for being a Somalian female it's like educating myself and, and like learning about different people's experiences which then like makes you more grateful for my position but also how I need to help yeah. other people as well like I always used to tell Beth like I got this job take me down and she used to get so angry she used to be like why like you why like I don't understand and I'm just like it's because I'm a fever I'm black and I'm, I wear a hijab so basically yeah like it, it, it was tough but like going to these different events it just like made me realize that okay I'm not the only one that goes through it like it's very much normal but why is it normal that we're going through this stuff mm. but that's why kick it out there do you know what i mean they're trying to obviously decrease the amount of discrimination that's happening within the game another opportunity we got was to you know play for the female team even though at least we got this one like obviously coming to uni we did kind of get sold a dream a little bit about the women's team because 
this is where the first team's meant to be at Etihad, but it's seemingly more opportunities for the, the Wembley UCFB. But still, like first year, like we had a sick season. Like we came in, uh, what did we, I think we won every single game. No, no, we didn't. We didn't lose a game, so we drew against one team. I conceded three goals that season, and I got golden gloves. You know, Alison is my favourite goalkeeper. <laughs> We'll put Alison to the side. We have Bethy and Janae, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, Thanks no. Thanks everyone. <laughs> but nah, nah, that was good because that was a good way of socialising mm, as well though. Yeah. Like, I d like, obviously on our course there was like, well, we started off with a few, we started off with like probably like five I girls feel, and yeah. then it dropped down to like three, three at, by the end of it. So it was good to meet other girls as well in like different years too. Mm. Um, but obviously I know COVID like fucked that a little bit in our second year like we couldn't really get into it but also it's quite difficult because every year you're losing players and then like if the intake of girls the year after of first years is not as good the numbers are going to like decrease and that's kind of what happened to us and it was a bit shit really I can't lie like we had like what three people turned up to training so that was quite it was quite sad because of how well we did the year before um but you know and then covid came along so what can you do so what would you do differently if you could start fishy again i was a massive stressor like i would not stress as much as i did in first year and actually probably go out a bit more um because i moved to a new city i didn't manage to find a like a good standard team straight away so i wasn't playing that like much serious football and I, I think i just like i stressed myself out too much and i worried about too much and like your grades don't even count in your first year like obviously learn the basics but don't stress yourself out to the point where you're like i don't know like i got really really like down towards christmas in my first year and it was just like and looking back that's probably the only thing i do differently really not being stressed nah like like not stressing myself out as much as in first year because then second and third year you still got to deal with that and it's like it does take a toll so i would do a lot of things differently if i went back to ucfb <laughs> so, this girl calls me stress as well you were one of my stressors i really was i really was guys one girl never used to turn off to her lectures <laughs> and then she'd be on the phone to me like I don't get this and I'm like well <laughs> maybe if was... you could <laughs> then you would learn and then you would get it which was true. so I'm learning all the content and then I'm giving it all to Halal no I because I was scared to, not that I was scared but I didn't want you to have to sit there and teach me do you know what I mean so I would never ask I would just wing it do you know what I mean I'd be like oh can you explain it like can you explain the actual assignment to me mm. and then go from there mm. like because I would just thought like Imagine she thinks like she's gonna be like what the fuck am I on lecture here like come to lesson. So I was just like nah I'm not even gonna ask what like I'm doing. Just give me the overall like assignments and then I'll go do the rest. So the next thing is I think I'd put myself out there more and like ask for more opportunities even though opportunities never really came my way. I don't know, I think you actually did I think you did a lot. I think you did bits like now as well you're doing bits too. Like it from a friend's point of view it seems like you were doing a lot even though the opportunities weren't exactly there for you really yeah i feel like you were grinding and you were constantly thinking about what to do next. what to do next yeah 100 yeah. percent, and like building a foundation whether you consciously thought it or not but i think you was building a foundation for you for when you leave uni like and you were trying different things as well like obviously you went to certain teams and mm like you didn't have a good experience but you you still after that you was like right like what am i doing now so like i definitely think that you did like i've came to the conclusion that i'm just had a bit too harsh on myself mm. yeah because i don't know like i just want to do better but and then it's just like everyone else around me will be like oh my god you're doing good but i'm just like I'm that's not a good doing mindset good. to have though because you can become complacent if you think yeah i'm doing all i need to do you ain't going to be looking for the next thing next thing hmm. I, I don't think i will ever be happy with where i'm at like yeah. until i am like until i know yeah. i am at the top and i'm comfortable i'm very money motivated as well like i need to be earning a good wage doing something i love and making a change 
and until I am at that position, I yeah, will be... Yeah, I won't be satisfied either. No. Yeah, I'm the same with you on that one, to be fair. What do you think UCFB could do differently for us to cater to our needs? From a female standpoint, I definitely think in first year, like, women football content, there was literally none. Like, when they refer to football, it would be men's football. Men. And I loved, as I got through the years, I was able to cater my assignments and bring in more things about women's football. But in lectures and stuff, like, you know, when we'd hear about managers and that, it male, would be, male, it man. would be male. It would be so male dominated. Rob, Alex and Pep. Yeah. But also as well, when you're in uni, like the research reflects that as well. So maybe that's why they spoke about it more in lectures because cool. there is literally nothing on women's football. It's getting better, like it definitely got better more recently, but when I was in first year, unless I was just looking in the wrong places, but... Mm. Not even that though, like when they're using examples, do you know what yeah. I mean? It'd always be the big, big managers, but... And male football. Mm. So yeah, like... Or like styles of play and stuff, so like as coaches, like we were learning content on like the way men's, men play and how to coach like men. Mm not so much female how, how how do we coach females do you know what i mean coaching women and coaching men it is going to be different like it, it like it just is like you can think i'm not going to lay out everything of why it's different but i'm sure you can think for yourself like different genders but we were sort of only like learning about the men's sort of side like you could see they would try and sort of come with like examples or maybe on a slideshow they'd put like a picture up of a women footballer but mm. uh, it was so heavily like male football i would appreciate it like more female lecturers yeah and maybe like um i don't know maybe offering us something to go down to like maybe like man city's women's and like um mm watching them like get um coach do you know what i mean like we we had a lot of coaches brought in didn't we but it'd be good to go on like field I'd trips watch it, to yeah. watch like not us get coached like we're uni students yeah. like some of us are footballers but some of us are not like we're coaches like we're not there to play football mm -hmm. even though some people were like <laughs> trying to do the most <laughs> during in practicals but yeah like i definitely agree with that i don't know whether they would have had it planned obviously you know when Come, we came along and I don't know whether they would have it planned that we go out and, and have a look but I definitely think there should have been more opportunities to go see a coach in their environment a instead coach. of them coming into yeah. our environment e yeah but even male coaches like even watching like an academy session oh yeah because we had the like, academy coaches and stuff that come in, come and in. Yeah. that would coach us but it's not them coaching in their environment, environment. true oh that's a good point but yeah I feel like more opportunities of us going to no me personally like i like as i feel like because there was only three girls on our course by what third year second year i feel like it wouldn't even be like if they turned around and went to some like Manchester united or something and was like oh we've got three girls on our um, football coaching management in um, course can they please like watch you blah 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 i wouldn't think that they would say no because it's only three of us do you know what i mean it's not like it's a whole agree, gang yeah. do you know what i mean but it's just like did you need to think about that? Do you know what I mean? Then again, but also we have to take ownership to yeah. go to them and be like, this is what we want. But at the same time, like, not a football uni. Do you know what I mean? Why am I thinking about? Why am I thinking about this for you? Do you know what I mean? Like, you go think of it yourself, and then take us to Man City, Liverpool, wherever, and like, let us um, watch, watch the coaches coach their players. Do you know but what they I mean? did. They, to be fair, though, they did say like, go out and watch academy sessions and. and go and but do as much so as you hard can. to get to like it's so hard to get into academy um, clubs and be like can i watch do you know what i mean especially i don't know in liverpool it is then about money but i've not tried to be fair like i don't know but yeah like that's something that i think our uni could do just offer more for the girls and them sell us dreams do you know what i mean yeah uni sold dreams a little bit but also it is you <sighs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to any other uni, I don't To be fair, I applied for Liverpool, um, John Moores. I applied to, to one Liverpool, John Moores, 
two in edge heel, one in hoop, and obviously UCFB. And I got into all of them um the same course so football coaching and management basically but then i just thought what is the point of going to a normal university to study football coaching and management if there's a whole football university that's gonna offer if you me know you're going into the football industry yeah. i definitely think like if this is definitely an industry that you want to go into like 100 yeah. percent like they have got good contacts like uni bring people in like guest speakers and but also like you're all there as well for like you know obviously Same. going back yeah. to meeting new people you're all there because you love football so it just makes it easier to yeah. connect with people and you all know that you want to go work in in the football industry so but even if you don't want to get into football or whatnot like whatever like industry you want to get into i'd recommend i'd recommend going to the university that is specialized in that topic does that make sense i don't know if that's obvious and people do that yeah. but i definitely recommend that because you'll get more out of the uni do you know what i mean rather than go to a university that is more specialized in the industry that you want to get into so that's the end of the video guys if you like this video make sure to like comment share subscribe and i'll be back again with more content soon with beth especially we've got a lot a yeah. lot up our sleeve do you know what i mean and inshallah we'll get more videos out so yeah. Inshallah. 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 Bye. <laughs> Bye.